Good evening, everyone. We are here with yet another session. Today, we are here with Dr. Shalin Lakhani. She is BNY's doctor from Moraji Desa Institute of Naturopathy and Yogic Sciences, affiliated to Gujarat Ayurved University. She was graduated in 2022. She is currently pursuing Master's in Acupuncture at New England School of Acupuncture, USA, serving as a secretary in the student body organization of acupuncture in the United States called Student Association of New England School of Acupuncture. She is also doing a part-time job in acupuncture clinic. In spite of uh, the time difference between us and her doctor, Shalin, she has allowed us to share her journey with all of us on our platform, On Your Growth. So thank you so much for your time. Once again, to welcome you on our platform. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bharat. It was such a nice introduction. Thank. I would like to thank the whole team of OYG to give me this platform where I can share my journey because I've seen a lot of students reaching out to me on social media regarding how can they pursue their master's in the United States or what is the procedure. So I think, this, I think this is the best way to reach out to as many students as we can. So let's get started with this session. Hi, I'm Dr. Shalin Nakhani, and uh, this is my introduction, which was given by Dr. Bhavit, so that's that. So why did I decide to do my master's? Why did I opt for it? For me, doing master's was always a plan. Um, so I wasn't sure until I came in my third year um, in which field I want to pursue my master's in. So I started searching for as many options were possible to us. Uh, so bachelors wouldn't have given me that much confidence to just open up my clinic or do a job just on the basis of my bachelor's degree. I needed a master's degree to give me one path, like a straight path to follow, in which I know I am best at it. I know its benefits. I know its limitations. And along with that, we can add bits and pieces of all the adjunctive therapies that we've done or we've studied throughout our bachelor's degree program of naturopathy and yogic science. So for me, master's was a basic requirement to you know establish your career and make your own private practice and this is the best way to enhance your skills that you've learned during your bachelor's and during your one year of internship i'm sure every one of you would have enjoyed your internship because that's the time when you are getting a lot of clinical experience and my fourth year was during the covid time so I didn't get any exposure during my fourth year in the clinical field. My best time in my bachelor's degree was uh, internship. And uh, that's how I also got to got so much fascinated with the treatment of acupuncture uh, because uh, it's just like we've just we've not even learned the basic acupuncture in our uh, degree course. I had in my college, I studied uh, the subject of acupuncture in my fourth year, whereas in many colleges, it's in third year. So you uh, start learning and get more experience in that field. But I didn't get that much experience. We just learned a set of um, basic points that, okay, for example, if you're having a knee joint pain, You'll, you'll choose, naturally, you'll choose stomach 36 or GB34, uh, extra 31, that is a hitting point, or skin 9. But why are you choosing that? It's not the same for every individual out there. And it differs patient to patient. What is the mechanism behind choosing that particular set of points? Just because it's the local area? No. Why we are choosing LI4 for every analgesic point. So that's the mechanism. That's the basic part I wanted to learn about. And yeah, this is the, I, I think I uh, did, like I do not regret my decision of doing a master's after it. Definitely you get an expertise. If you start doing a job, that's an amazing thing. But if you do the master's in any kind of field, even if you do MSc, MD, it gives you a sense of direction it gives you an authentic knowledge and it helps you to apply it in a correct way. 
So yeah, you learn from an expertise during this time and master's degree is the time when you get at most like so much exposure in your clinical field. So if you are planning to do your master's, you don't just plan, bring it into an action. Don't wait for your fourth year or final year to come. Even if you are in your second year or third year, start searching for it. Even if you're not sure what you want to master's in, what, what do you want to do your master's in, just search. If you want to do your nutrition and dietetics, search the curriculum. So like, look at the overview of like every college website has the overview of how you'll be studying, what and all you'll be doing in these three years or two years or four years. So whatever that is convenient for you, you need to choose that and always have that thing in your mind that we as doctors, we are, we are having a lifelong learning process. It's never going to stop. So even if you are doing a job, just learn something on the other side by side. It will only help you to get better and better at it. So you can list your, start listing your research, like interest and just research all the things you can collect it together. And then during the final year or third year, you can actually start preparing all your documents of whatever is required. And you will be knowing the best that, okay, these are these and all things are required to do my master's. So I'll start collecting all of those information beforehand. So how to get started? First of all, if you're not sure, as I said, search for these of subjects on the internet. Internet is the best friend for now. You should not rely on that. I'll tell you why uh, in the coming up slides because I did my research on Google. Like I, I just simply searched top 10 schools of acupuncture or, or top 10 colleges of nutrition and dietetics. And uh, it gave me, it, it, it helped me a lot, but you shouldn't rely on the top one. Okay, top one college is that, so I'll apply for that. It's not that. You need to do a thorough research. Then explore the countries you want to go in. If you want to be nearby, you can apply for UK, Australia. If you're ready to spend your time and money like from a very distant place, you can go for the United States of America. And uh, whatever is convenient for you financially and uh, depending on the time you can invest in, you can choose the countries that you can go in. So all these things take time. And that's why I'm telling you, start beforehand, because at the very end moment, you have, you'll have not be having any clue what you wanna do. So at least you have one thing in your mind, at least you have one backup plan in your mind that, okay, if, I'm, if I don't wanna do a job, if, I, if I'm not feeling confident enough, I can do this or that on side by side. Then comes like shortlisting your universities. Whichever universities you like, uh, you can just add into your list, make a word document, keep adding it. What is the duration? What is the financial cost of it? What in all will be uh, taught over there? What institutions are they affiliated with? Then you have to check the authenticity. This is very important. There are just colleges out there who are giving this kind of um, courses just for two years, three years, but they are not actually authenticated. So you need to see that it is authenticated by ACAOM, particularly for acupuncture in, in United States. It stands for Accreditation Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. On the basis of this accreditation, you'll be able to get your license if you want to practice in the United States, if you want to do your job in the United States. So make sure the college is authenticated properly. And, and if based on this accreditation, your whole academics, your whole curriculum is designed. And uh, like this basic set of hours that you require to complete during your academics, like 600 plus hours is needed to do your clinical assistantship. You need these number of hours to do your theoretical knowledge. You need to be present. You need to... Uh, do in-person classes for these number of hours. So this set a uh, bar for you, for the government in the United States to give you the license. What did I do? I actually asked many uh, 
I, I try to get as much information as I can because um, I actually tried connecting to so many doctors out there who are already practicing in the United States, but I didn't get that much of the information as I should be getting. So I didn't have that much clue. So it took me around two to three years to come here. And I mean, making my whole, like doing this whole admission process, deciding which college you want to go in, if it's authenticated, if it's worth it, you need to know that beforehand because you should not be regretting your decision when you come here. It's a different country, different people. Your family is in India and you don't want to regret your uh, whatever the money or time you've spent around here. So you need to check the curriculum, prerequisites, and the duration of the course. Many uh, colleges over here provide, offer like four years of acupuncture degree course, three years of acupuncture degree course. I chose the college in which I can complete the degree in short time. Uh, so this college, uh, NISA, it's called New England School of Acupuncture under MCBHS University. I chose this college because uh, it's, first of all, it's under your university, so you get the perks of it. Secondly, because right now I'm enrolled in just the acupuncture program, but in future, if I want to add the herbs, it's the herbal studies, and it's like the Chinese medicine, so I can add on and it just increases one semester that is like four months of study. So I can complete this whole study of acupuncture and herbs in three years. Whereas in other colleges, it takes around like four years to complete. And uh, yeah, it is, it, it's, it, this university is teaching you uh, exactly same uh, academics that is like um, suitable for you to sit in the license exam. So yeah, you need to check all of that. You need to check your tuition fee structure, finance related things. Uh, you need to check the affiliated institutions for assistantship and internship because in future in master's degree, in my third year, we'll be going at several places of due to our internships. So if you know beforehand that, okay, this college has a tie up with this, uh, hospital i'll be getting so much exposure in this particular set of um practice so you know where you want to go uh and this makes a very good like this is a very good opportunity to make contacts and a very good opportunity to get hired by a good uh, private practitioner or a hospital setting and uh, you can get get your job soon after uh, completing your master's over here and also some of the colleges do provide the uh, details of the scholarship. So you need to go through the website really thoroughly to check that. And also start reaching out to the current students who are studying over there. For me, I connected to them on Instagram and LinkedIn. So just search the university that you want to go in. Uh, search the students who are studying the same course as you are going to study ask them about the class, the environment, how is it like to study over there? How are the professors? How is the job opportunity? What is the internship like? Do they train you well? Do you get enough hands-on experience? You need to ask all of that. And you'll get the idea that might actually start uh, getting, like you, you might start getting interested in that college and uh, uh, for me, uh, when I started searching, as I told you yesterday, uh, as I told you in the last slide, that uh, do not rely on the Google uh, uh, results is because of this. I connected to one student uh, studying in the top acupuncture college. It's called Oriental College of uh, Oregon. So yeah, I connected over there and there the student uh, studied in this college as well as that college. So she was like, uh, it's just based on the research or cohort. The Google results are just based on the cohort research. And uh, the, it doesn't have that many professors over here. They don't uh, pay that much attention. They hardly know how to play the slides or they hardly make any PowerPoints. So that was a negative review. And I was so uh, 
like shocked that even on Google, it's like a number one. You shouldn't rely on that result because whenever, like if I would have taken admission in that college, I would have not gotten the best education. And I connected to around five to six people studying in this college and I got a very positive review. And that's why I uh, chose this college. And if, if you go to any website of that particular university or a college, um, you just share your details. You just email them and telling that I'm interested to do my master's and this is this course. So can you let me know if there are any webinars or that have been like um, that are that are like in the future uh, that has been like in the conduct if they're going to conduct it. So yeah, you need to uh, be up to date for this and you can get the idea regarding what they will be uh, teaching to you throughout the course. You can ask your own questions directly to the university. So yeah, that's that. This is the very um, main step throughout your admissions. Um, so for me, I didn't have uh, that much information regarding which university to choose. And uh, you can contact any agency nearby you. I mean, the best one which you hear, which you hear is like a good one. Just go there. You get a free consultancy. They don't charge you with a single PESA. And uh, they just uh, consult you. And they have no idea about acupuncture. They had no idea about any kind of uh, master's in acupuncture. I was the first one. So I had to do my own research. And uh, I just asked them, can you please at least make sure that uh, if this particular college is authenticated, if this university is a reputed one, so that I know I'm going on the right path. So they did for me. And they actually help you a lot, uh, like getting your requirements on a proper time. They will send you the deadline. Okay, you need to submit these documents at a particular time before it like before the deadline. So that really kept me um, on the track of uh, proper admission process. So yeah, contact the agency, it's really helpful. And if you are going in nutrition and dietetics or any public health, that's a very common um, thing and they will be definitely knowing about it. So you don't need to worry about it if you're going to opt for it. I had to do my own research very thoroughly. So that's why I always say, please do your research whenever you go, uh, wherever you go. Do, do not rely on their suggestions because it's their job to suggest you the universities and they do this every single day for so many students. So make sure you're going to a nice place. Check your requirements that is needed for the admission. Like you need to give the entrance exam, just uh, your, um, it's called the English proficiency exams. And the common exams for that are like IELTS and TOEFL. These are the most common um, exams that they accept throughout the United States or Canada or uh, UK. They will always accept this. So it's safer to give these exams apart from any of the English proficiency competencies exam that you come across. I gave my IELTS and I got like a like you need minimum of, uh, there's a basic requirement of 6.5 bands, bands. So it's pretty simple. You should be good at it. Um, then shortlist the colleges that you are interested in once you have decided in which particular field you want to proceed in. Then these are the requirements required in every single college. So when I came, I gave my IELTS, I submitted the score, then I had to give my statement of purpose. That's your personal statement regarding why you are interested in this field. Why should we choose you? What is your work experience? We didn't have, I didn't have any work experience. I just did my internship, but internship is more than enough for your work work experience in order to take your uh, admissions and master's uh, because you've, um, earned so much hours you've done so much hours of uh, internship during your uh, internship period so they will definitely accept that you've worked in around four to five different hospitals you've done these 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 treatments in short you have to market yourself just put yourself out there and uh, <clears throat> yeah 
you need to um, say a lot of good things about yourself. Um, letter of recommendation you need to get from your um, university or college professors and dean. I need I needed to submit three of them. So yeah, and also the transcripts. This is the main thing where I got so much. Um, I got it messed up at first, but yeah, uh, it has to be evaluated. The transcripts that you'll be getting from the universities is not enough. You need to give it, uh, you need to get it evaluated under a US-based uh, credential centers that I'll be explaining much in detail in the upcoming slides because I think there's where every student struggles. Um, and lastly, they conduct an interview, like one-on-one -on -one interview with the faculty member, and they will ask you that why you wanna come here is the basic questions. You don't need to worry about that. You just need to say why you're interested and why uh, you are the proper candidate or proper student for them to like study in their university or college. And utilize this time to ask as many questions as you can. They love your questions and they expect to ask you questions. And that uh, shows how much interested you are to get into that university. So ask the questions about like scholarship. If you wanna know about the scholarship, ask for it. You do not need to be shy about it. What is the eligibility? What is the criteria? I'm interested for it. And <clears throat> yeah. Uh, also, I would like to share, because I asked about the scholarship, I actually got the academics, they offered me the academic scholarship as of some amount of money. And that is really helpful for me right now. Plus I'm living for free right now in, on, on campus. It's like a one year grant. Uh, so they're providing me free housing just because I asked for it. I just asked that is it possible to provide a one-year grant or a scholarship to live on campus because I'm an international student? People over here are like um, really work well with you if you are like if you if you look <clears throat> sorry if you look genuine, they will help you out. And if they think you are a good asset to this university, they will definitely provide you some help. So yeah. And uh, yeah, this is the process of how to get your transcripts evaluated. So as soon as you get your transcripts uh, from your university, you need to send it in a sealed envelope. It should be coming in a sealed envelope by your university with a stamp on it. If your envelope is opened with your transcripts on, it's they're not gonna accept it. So make sure it is sealed. That's why I've mentioned the sealed one over here and you can the centers that you can send it is west and ece and uh yeah i'll just proceed with this one yeah first of all um as i mentioned there's two centers which most students get their transcripts evaluated is the best so our uh degree or any ayush based uh, course is not uh, accepted in best so do not waste your time and money and like ordering the transcripts from the university and then sending it to the west they will reject it they're not going to accept the alternative medicine or they just i think they are just accepting the commerce related field and engineering field i don't think they're accepting any medical field so i sent to the ec evaluation and they gave me a really good uh, report and I myself was confused if I'll be getting the uh, evaluation done based on my uh, bachelor's degree but fortunately I got it and I've also shared a sample as a report uh, so that you all get the review of how a bachelor's of naturopathy and yogic sciences degree is evaluated it's pretty cool so uh, yeah then you send this sealed transcripts from you get it from your university and you send it during uh, the selection of the evaluation type there are two types there is a document by document and there's course by course so if you want to take a master's admission you need to select the course by course evaluation where they will convert it into a gpa 
your GPA is given out of four. So whatever number of marks you're getting, even if you're getting in your 70s, it's it's really good. I, they will like Indian students probably get very good evaluation report card. So I'll show you my my report over here. Um, yeah, this is what I got. So they just evaluated my uh, all the mark sheets, my provisional certificate. I submitted that and uh, then they considered it as the four to one half years of study naturopathic medicine program. And I got four GPA, which is amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, these are the subjects that they uh, gave me the credits for. And these will be considered in your master's degree that so that you save your time. And I got the credits for anatomy and physiology, which they are teaching right now over here. So we already have done that. So we all will be getting the credits for it. And you do not, you won't be feeling that much burden to studying over there. I also got the credits for microbiology and the nutrition thing. Yeah, nutrition and dietetics and microbiology. So that saves a lot of time so that you can focus on more important things. So yeah, this is the overview of how to send your transcripts. Yeah, I've uh, just mentioned the whole process of it, so you know it. So once you get admission, you'll receive an offer letter and you'll start getting on board. The process is, admission process is not over yet. It's still left and there are lots of things to do. So as I said, ask for the scholarship once you get your offer letter. Okay, I, if it, will I be getting a scholarship in the academics or on campus housing thing, go for it, ask for it, and probably they will help you out. Then make a decision. If you've applied in two to three universities at the same time, decide one university that you wanna go in and accept the offer letter. Get your I-20. For the international students, uh, you require your I-20. It's a proof of for education that you'll be doing in the United States, and that's how you'll be getting your F-1 visa. So once you get your I-20, they will sending out to you from the university at your home. You need to take that original copy during your visa appointment in a US-based consulate. So you need to get that appointment um, in a US consulate. And yeah, you, you will be getting your F-1 visa. Some of them who are having uh, the tourist visa of USA, you can just directly go and put it in a Dropbox or else uh, you need to actually uh, secure uh, like a booking and it takes time. So all of this process for me, it took around six to seven months. I started as soon as I started doing my internship. So um, I started during September and it took me around uh, six to seven months. That is, I got my admission in March after collecting all these documents in the previous documents of submitting it. So yeah, it's a it's a time, it's a very long process. So you need to be patient, but you'll definitely get it. So don't worry about it. So the future scope over here, um, in India, we all hear about the cruise acupuncturist because that's the uh, maximum eligibility that they can take on the cruise of ships uh, if you do your MD from India or Sri Lanka. Uh, over here, I've not heard that much about the clothes, but there are people who do that. Maximum number of private practices that I have seen over here are all these things, mainly in the pain department, that is the orthopedic acupuncture, which they focus mainly on the pain conditions, the fertility, women's health. This is the very uh, in-demand uh, thing over here. Sports medicine, again, a very interesting and a demanding uh, thing over here. Along with all of this, you can do your cosmetic or uh, pediatrics uh, and a community style of acupuncture. You must be knowing about the community style. I, I have attended a few sessions uh, about it on the OIG itself. So yeah, there's a whole uh, video about it. And uh, yeah, you get an exposure in oncology as well and the research as well. There's like an... Um, 
International Association of Acupuncture, Acupuncture Research Society, uh, where you get to go and meet the scholars of all around the United States and all around the world who come over there. Uh, they uh, get together and present their research that they've done. They do the uh, paper presentation and you get a very good exposure over there. You can start making your uh, contacts and they actually know, okay, this is the person and this is he or she has done the naturopathy and yoga over there. So yeah, also it has the herbs. So you can open your own uh, pharmacy over here or you can just directly, you don't even need to buy the herbs. You can just collaborate with other uh, pharmacy who are having the Chinese herbs and you can have your own small uh, clinical pra practice like private practice. You can um, connect with them and directly send the medication, uh, which is like the Chinese herbs to your patient directly. You do not even need to buy it you just need to dispense they will just dispense your medication according to your prescription so it's it's a good thing to learn in an extra if you want to learn extra if you have time you can learn it then the style that they offer you of course is one of is the chinese style the other one that really interested me before i uh, got admission in the in this college is they provide this style of acupuncture it's called the japanese style they work on more of the palpation skills pulses and abdominal palpation and it's like a non insertive techniques so it's very helpful for for treating the children you children are very scared and uh, of the needles so you can just provide this japanese style of treatment and it is very very helpful it's it's a very non-invasive kind of treatment there are no deep insertions of the needles they're superficial you'll hardly feel any prick uh with the japanese style needles it's a very interesting uh style of doing it i got i myself got to know about it when i came here and there's this Master Tang and Dr. Tang's balance method, which we'll be learning as an elective over here. And um, yeah, there are many, uh, there have been many sessions. Uh, I think many of us BNY students must be knowing Dr. Bha uh, Bhargav. He has conducted many sessions for this. And I personally got to know about this method from him, like during uh, his webinars. And there's some kind uh, of acupuncture. It's the Korean style, they just use the four set of points. It's very interesting. I haven't learned this yet. I'm just learning these styles right now. I'm in my first year, so it's just the basic. And for us, as a BNY student, it's pretty much easier for us to cope up with the academics over here because we've learned so much. We know about many diseases that has been happening. So that is a plus point plus point for us if they're talking about any disease like and and we know the mechanism behind it we know why it happens and we're easily able to correlate to it and tcm theory and naturopathy theory is quite like it's a diff it's a different system of medicine but you already have the belief in uh, believe that body heals itself and that's the same thing uh, in uh, tcm but with a different approach so it's like one aim but different ways of doing it so yeah it depends on you what you choose to do but you'll definitely get the results uh clinical exposure here in my college is like uh, we have 60 uh, during these three years of course we have 600 hours of assistantship and internship so right now in my first year i did uh uh assistantship that is you have to shadow an intern and a supervisor when they are providing any kind of treatment to the pa patient we are not allowed to prick the patients uh, in the first year we all have done during an internship, but here we are not allowed to do that. They're quite strict about it. And you're not even allowed to practice outside guidance. You cannot prick your roommates around you uh, just like that. It requires they, they have a really strict rules. You need a license in order to practice outside. And uh, you will be getting an exposure in a hospital setting 
uh, there, there are many kinds of practices that has been happening. So it's an integrated approach. So that's a very interesting way to know um, how acupuncture can be uh, integrated with, along with different kinds of system. And uh, you have to be more um, accepting uh, of other fields as well. You cannot be rigid that only this kind of uh, system or medicine works. Um, that's what we have learned in naturopathy and yoga that some of the, like so many, there are so many therapies that we've learned together. One therapy works, whereas one doesn't. So it really depends on the individual. And that's what they have been teaching us right here. Uh, private practice, there are so many private practices out there. So you can just, we get an opportunity to choose whatever we like and uh, we can go over there, do an assistantship. We just need to get it approved from our clinical director over here. And she will, uh, she really uh, allows you to go over there and people over here are willing to teach you new things and they are willing to learn more things from you as well. So when I told that I've done my uh, bachelor's in natural building yoga science, people were fascinated. They were, they were so into it. And uh, it's like a very interesting thing for them to learn about. And naturopathy medicine over here is a big thing. You get, you earn a lot if you collaborate naturopathy with acupuncture, if you are thinking about just like owning and having a good practice. But um, in a community style, you can actually serve if you have that uh, emotion of serving people around there with the a minimum amount of energy exchange charge. So it depends on you as well, what you want to go through. Nothing is bad. Uh, you're here to make your career. So you are the, your own master. So you are the best decision maker for yourself. My college is also has a tie up with the Cleveland Clinic. It's one of the top hospitals in, it's in Ohio. And we have the opportunity to go and assist and do our internships over there under an acupuncturist uh, for a whole week. It's a 30 hour internship thing. So, uh, and there's also Boston Medical Center. It's, um, they practice the family medicine on Fridays, integrated clinic on Thursdays. So according to that, you can go and uh, explore all the kinds of various practices they are having around in United States. If you want to stay here, I mean, if you want to work here, then um, it's a very good opportunity to uh, go over there and learn new things, make contacts. And that way, uh, soon after, if you're about to graduate, they will just offer you a job and you can do that for a year or so. The challenges that you might face is, uh, yeah, first of all, as I said, admission process is a time-taking process, to you, so you need to be patient about it. And uh, there is a housing thing. Um, many places have a very uh, uh, limited number of housing options. We have housing on campus as well as off campus. So on campus is quite expensive compared to off campus, but uh, there's also uh, the location thing. Uh, whenever you get admission, start searching for the housing on Facebook. They have a lot of places. There are lots of students studying and in, in over there and looking for the partner or a roommate that they can share with. Uh, so you can collaborate with them. You can ask for it. You can do the background check before you come here so that you don't need to decide that like in just two days, you you actually get the time uh, beforehand to research about the area around it. How much time does it take to reach the university from your house? So you need to do all of that. Uh, I got the grant. I got the scholarship. So that was not an issue for me. But uh, for the upcoming years, if I want to move outside, um, I'll just search on the Facebook or any students out here, I can ask them if, you're, if they're having any contacts uh, regarding this housing situation. Then the culture shock. It's a whole um, like different experience over here, different kind of people, different country, uh, different kind of language. And uh, 
of course you know english but it's just the common topics that they share you might feel alone for some days if you've got indian friends around you amazing you're set you're good to go in my call in my class i am the only indian who's studying over there so i have a whole set of different community uh, uh so there are like americans there are chinese people there are korean people and i'm glad that it happened because i got the chance to connect with them i i got the chance to interact more with them at first i was i'm a very like a uh, Uh, i do not speak that much at first but slowly you start opening up and you get to know about uh their side as well the bachelors that, that they've done and you share your own like knowledge with each other and you build new friendships it's quite interesting and exciting at the same time it, you might feel homesick for sure uh, at first even if you stayed away from your home it's a whole different country so it might surprise you but it's going to be worth it at the end so you you will definitely achieve um, and you'll enjoy the process of learning sorry the communication as i said you might face some difficulty but it's not that difficult people over here are most of the people that i've met are very supportive and they're very helpful uh, some of uh, you'll find uh, every kind of people everywhere so yeah um and you have to search for the part time jobs so the f1 visa holders do not get to do a uh, off campus job in the united states especially you can do the jobs off campus in canada but i don't think it's possible in united states it is not possible at all um, for the f1 visa holders you need to find on campus job uh so i just asked if they required anyone to do uh, any kind of job like related to the acupuncture clinic or, or if they need anybody uh, in their store or dispense the herbs so yeah i got the uh, job and i do that for like twice a week and that's just for like a few hours so you can just go sit there uh, uh do the job whatever they provide and side by side you can also study your own thing so it's not that much um difficult over there uh but yeah uh, you can get uh, also a job as a research assistant um so definitely ask about it even during your interviews when you'll be having with your with the faculty members over here ask about the part time jobs if they provide it or not and utilize that you'll get a lot of knowledge about it you'll get a lot of information um and then plan after your opt expires there's the opt it's the it, it, it's what you get after you graduate from your masters so for the stem program you get 3 years of opt and you can do a job for 3 years over here whereas non stem program you can just work for 1 year and then if they if your a uh, boss over here or wherever you work if that company sponsors your h1b you'll get your h1b visa via a lottery if you're like fortunate but uh, it's quite difficult to get an h1b visa uh, during your one year of opt you keep trying on and on and on again so it's it's pretty hard if if you are thinking about settling over here in united states after you graduate after you graduate to do like after you are done with your masters so yeah i i my whole purpose of coming over here was just to get an exposure a uh, higher education learn from an expertise uh, i never thought about settling over here but i'm definitely open uh, for new opportunities that will be out like available for me in the future if they are providing me the job i will do it if uh, there's not a possibility to stay here or i don't know if i might change my mind so i'm just uh, looking for my opportunities i'm definitely open to the opportunities in future so we'll see about that so you want to make sure if you're planning to settle here you want to think about it okay and this is the uh, virtual tour i'm going to give you an overview of how you can search just a second so 
sharing. Okay. So this is the website and Okay. Yeah. So this is the website of my university. Uh, this is the basic overview of how you can search any kind of programs that you're interested on a website. There are three basic things that you need to do by your searching for it. Okay. So just go in the academics program that you will see several programs that they're offering in that particular university. There are, there is even public health as well. So there are both undergraduate and graduate program. You want to look your program under a graduate. It's a master's degree. Undergraduate is a bachelor's degree over here. So there are three acupuncture programs. This one is just the acupuncture, which you will be completing in like two and a half, uh, two, two years and 10 months. This is the acupuncture along with the Chinese herbal medicine specialization. And this is the doctorate program as well for four years. This is of three years and this is of two years and 10 months. So I'll just click on the basic masters of acupuncture. It will show you the start term fall that's around September, October. So, and this is, as I said, it's a 32 month course. So you get the overview, of what you'll be learning throughout your 32 month journey. It's the actors, it's called a Japanese acupuncture style. What you'll be learning throughout your second year, it's more clinical based. Then third year is your internship. You'll be assisting under an expertise. And um, what is their accreditation? How they're accredited? What is, what do this, it also over your insurance covers the cost of the acupuncture treatments for the citizens over here. So yeah, that's that. And then you can look at the uh, admission requirements. So these are the basic things that you want to check out when you're searching for your university. Um, yeah, as I said, they require these prerequisites. International, go under the international applicants that they will give proper details regarding what do they require. This is the English competency exams. Then uh, you need to look at the curriculum. Curriculum, these are the subjects that they have been providing. This is the fall semester. So one year uh, has three semesters, fall, spring, and summer. It's uh, four months each. And uh, yeah, these are the subjects that have been uh, taught to us. I have completed my first two semesters. So I'm done with these subjects. And um, I'll be doing my summer from next month onwards. This is the second year. Then comes the third year. The only difference between this and the herbs program is just adding on the herbs. It's the same track, but they just have herbs as the extra study. And the doctorate program is for one year. Uh, it basically has the uh, research things that you need to learn, and it requires one more year to uh, get your doctorate degree. So yeah, this is the tour of the MCPHS University website. Um, let me just go back. You can, if you have any kind of questions, please feel free to connect to me um, on email or on Instagram, whatever you want to. And I'll try my best to help you out in each and every possible way. I know there are a lot of struggles uh, during the admission process regarding the documents and stuff, but um, I'll try my best to help you out and. Uh, I, I I know this process is long, but you got this. So all the best for that if you are planning to do. And uh, good luck all the students who are pursuing your bachelor's in naturopathy and yoga. It's a great uh, system of medicine and you'll just enjoy the process. Learn as much as you can. Gather all the knowledge so that you can be a best practitioner in future. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. As it was a very detailed information for me also. So I was also learning throughout the session. So, okay, each and every point. So I have 
two three questions that uh, when we finish our bnys that the journey is very clear but the thing is there are certain time points where we will not able to find people who will connect us to these universities a few people might feel difficulty to do that so instagram linkedin would be the platform but other than that how they can approach directly to the universities yeah uh, so universities they provide their email ids and over there uh, over there they actually have the system uh, there are several departments and there are several head of the departments who are uh, uh, in charge of that particular field so if i'm uh, emailing to that uh, university um, or they even provide the contact information but i don't think that is possible from in like contacting from india but the easiest way to connect to a university is emailing them and they can connect you with the uh, current students who are studying over there for example i'm a part of the student organization so anyone who is interested to do a masters in acupuncture uh, the university will request will tell me that uh, okay you need to help this school out you need to help this uh, student who is willing to do their masters in acupuncture so that i can give you the tour i can give you the uh, glimpse of how you'll be studying and what and all things are required like relating to it even with the financial financial condition or, or scholarships they will be providing the information and in depth they will help out the best way possible is that helpful yeah definitely and there is a myth the second question would be of mine that there is a myth of like financial difficulties when we go abroad and everyone has a uh, like thought process that if you are going outside you might be a rich person that's why you are going outside but that is not true for me also and what i see people also so can you just elaborate in this point that it's not about that that you should be rich to study outside or study abroad that should not be the point yeah definitely that is not the like that should not be a barrier uh, if you're not rich you cannot go out that's a, absolutely a myth so what happens over your us or any other universities out there they want really good students and if they find you to be like a, a like genuine they find you that you are excellent in your academics and you had your work experience they will provide you the scholarship or they will provide you the loan options that are available for me i tried to get a loan uh, but uh, uh, there was a really short time and i was uh, lacking some of the documents which i was not able to submit so i didn't get a loan but uh, and so my dad is sponsoring right now but uh, over here also after you come here there are some options of getting a loan for especially for uh, international students so there's no harm in applying for it and uh, there's some amount of money that university gives you if you are standing out in class if if you are having your outstanding position if you're getting a good gpa like uh, they require minimum amount of gpa over here out of four you need to get at least 2.75 or 3 in order to get a scholarship so you'll be able to get it we've got, we've got the basic knowledge about it it's i'm telling you it's not difficult for us first year over here is really simple for us as a bnw student and you'll shine out here so and university will go out of their i mean i wouldn't say go out of their way but they will try their best to provide you um comfort and they they do not want to lose their asset so there's no harm in trying and you definitely want to try for your loans out here um, i do not have that much information regarding loans so you might want to do your search on that yeah yeah and and how do, do how do you find that like these kind of information like we do not have any such institute of acupuncture in india is it true or we have institutes who deliver the information or teachings only of acupuncture in india 
what do you mean by uh, institutions of acupuncture? Yeah, so any institutes are like, there in India also, or have you researched about that while you came out to this university? So, uh, after we did our master, uh, I mean, bachelor's, we just have the MD option in acupuncture in India. And I actually wanted, personally, I wanted to explore how it works in a like how it works in various parts of the world, our system of medicine, what are their beliefs, what do they do in order to treat a patient, what is their own approach. So I never searched for the, I, I did search few universities in like Sri Lanka or um, I didn't find any other universities in India of acupuncture, which are like apart from the MD ones. So that didn't, uh, really interested me but uh, these I basically searched uh, the institutions that are in abroad in UK there are there is an acupuncture institute it's of two years but I don't think that's the enough time to get that much information in such a short time and I don't think that was an authenticated one so you definitely want to give some time and searching wherever you want to go and I found out that this was the best school for me and that's why I chose it it might differ for other students so yeah I always wanted to come uh, abroad to study my to do my master's so that was my priority and I searched more for it what would be your final message to everyone to me also that how you feel about that and how should this go to the students Okay, so um, right now in this era, right now in this competitive world, you even if you say that, okay, you are good, you're getting good exposure in your clinical thing or uh, during your job, you want to stand out. It's the truth. You want to stand out in your particular field. And I would say it's a life lo lifelong process don't look at your age even if you're 30 and doing your naturopathy and yoga it's okay you're getting your knowledge um you're doing your if you're doing your masters it will just enhance your skills masters is i would say it's creating one path um I mean, it, it clears your way of approaching a patient. You have the mastery in that thing. You have the control of that particular system. And then you can add on the things uh, like whatever you've learned during your bachelor's thing. So I think it sets a very good, um, I would say a pathway for you to uh, follow along and uh, yeah, just go for it i would say even if you want to do online do online create yeah like add more professional character to your career it's not going anywhere you will only progress you won't regress so just keep learning and uh, whoever is planning to do their masters do not think too much about it it's a basic requirement right now. You definitely need your um, a higher education after your bachelor's. Bachelor's is okay, but master's is better. So with this, we would like to end today's session. And thank you so much for connecting with me and connecting with the whole BNY's community. With this, we will help many students definitely because... For me also, it was a insightful and eye-opener because there are many points which we are aware, but we are not aware in a detailed format, like how we have connected the dot by dot. So the bridge of information, what you have provided to all of us, definitely it is going to bring a change and help to connect many more students. And if anyone asks you, you will have a reference to share with them that you have already spoken about in detail. So definitely this would be a path breaking for these people, those who are interested in acupuncture, especially in abroad. So thank you so much once again to come on our platform. Thank you so much for connecting.
interrupting and um, thank you for having me over here. Even I was so much glad to, you know, share my journey as to as much students as I can, because I've seen students like they really want to do their masters, but they're not getting a path here. They do not know a person who is doing. I was one of them and I've like been through this journey. So I'm more than happy to help you out. Please feel free to connect to me anytime and I will be right back as soon as I can. So thank you so much and good luck to every one of you. Thank you.